What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and happy Tuesday. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, having a great day so far, and of course testing negative for all those viruses. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Virus Update for Tuesday, November 11th, 2025, Veterans Day 2025 in the United States. Thank you to all the veterans who served our country. Thank you for your service. Alrighty, if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. There's a lot of viruses out there, but not enough information is going around to prepare you for what is actually going on to keep you informed. Yeah, that's where I come along. I give you the latest news, data, and anything I can find to help keep you safe and informed of what's going on with these viruses. Want to stay informed? Just subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below. Alrighty, we do have just a few news stories today. We do have some data to take a look at, and we do have some not-so-good uh, news locally in my area when we get to the EMS data. I'll show you that in a little bit, and of course, we'll take a look at some wastewater sites as well. Starting off in Texas today, where Laneville uh, Independent School District cancels all classes due to widespread illness. Yes, this is not good. Laneville, Texas. The Laneville Independent School District has canceled classes for the week of November 10th due to widespread illness. And you notice they do say for the week. Yeah, that means that it is uh, pretty serious that they're going to have to cancel classes for the entire week. And it doesn't say what it is. It just says it's a variety of sickness among students and staff, which began last week, and the decision to cancel classes were made when the reports of sickness continued on Monday of this week. So again, Texas, hey, Laneville, Texas, no school for you this week because you're dealing with illness. I think this is something as we get deeper into the colder months, we're going to see more of. Uh, it's starting early this year. Our tracking thread over on the website, it's filling up, but mind you, we also put like moving cough cases and other things, so it's not always closed schools like it was last year, but nonetheless, we are seeing a ton of school illness issues already this year. All right, Dennis the COVID Info Guy posted this over on X. Finland reports COVID surge, 200 cases per week reported already. I don't know if that's a high number there based on their population, but it seems to be a number that is going up from the last time I heard of anything from Finland, these are laboratory confirmed cases and only the tip of the iceberg in terms of current infections. You know what that means. A lot of infections are not being picked up because people are either not testing or these right here. I feel like we've been showing this same, you know, at home testing kit for the longest time. But hey, it is my example to you as to why sometimes the numbers are not reflecting really the full story of what is going on. It's because of things like at home testing and of course the bigger problem people just not testing at all oh, it's just a cold COVID's over with well no COVID's not over with uh, here's more proof of that over in queensland australia also from dennis the COVID info guy here's the weekly respiratory surveillance report there for november 4th to november 10th and we've been watching parts of australia see the viruses go up again remember they are in spring now they had winter they had their winter wave and Maybe now they're starting to see another wave to some degree. COVID, 297 cases. Yeah, that's up by 16.9%. Influenza, 1,298 cases. That's up by 17.4%. RSV, 413 cases of that. That's actually down by 2.5%. COVID hospitalizations in Queensland, 21, up by 31.2%. Influenza, 69. Yeah, that's actually up by 21%. RSV, 24 that is down by 22.5%. All right, moving over to the UK now, where there is a sharp increase in bird flu cases being reported across Wales. Visitors at, uh, at Welsh lakes have been noticing dead and sick birds at lakes across Wales. That is a tall, telling sign that bird flu is going around. Uh, if you come across sick birds, whether it be there or anywhere around the world, and you notice that there's a lot of dead birds in the area, do whatever you can to try and report that to the proper authorities, the local agencies, maybe it's a game commission, wildlife management, whoever it is, 
report that because it's not normal to be seeing a lot of uh, sick birds. And all across the UK, we've been seeing a big increase in bird flu once again. We've been seeing an increase here in the United States, Canada, and many different places. So yes, we are definitely in, I want to say, another global wave of bird flu at this time that is not good. All right, bringing it back to the United States, let's go over for that weekly Walgreens update where eh, we do have a few changes here. You notice there's more colors than just green on this map today. You're seeing yellow. You're also seeing orange. You're seeing lighter shades of green. Yeah, that dark green, like we saw last week, it's not as prevalent. And there's a reason for that. Remember, they used the Acute Respiratory Illness Score, ARI, with green being good, orange and red, well, that would be bad. And we do see Tennessee is orange. And in fact, on their scale of 1 to 10, Tennessee is now ranking at 7.46%. Now, full disclaimer here, this is only test being conducted for flu and COVID at Walgreens. It does not include someone who went and got tested at, say, CVS, an urgent care, a hospital, a doctor's office, or anything else. This is strictly from Walgreens. And based on the Walgreens stores in Tennessee, their overall acute respiratory illness activity score is 7.46. Now, some other places are starting to trend in the wrong direction as well. District of Columbia, Washington, D.C., 4.62%. Ohio is coming up at 4.13%, New York, 3.09%, uh, Missouri, still low, but uh, almost 3% at 2.95%, Wyoming, 2.86%, Wisconsin, 2.74%, Nebraska, 2.61%. You get the point here. Iowa is at, what's Iowa, 206 So there's a lot of places starting to go above 1%. Now, let's change this to flu, and we can see here, overall, flu is still dark green. Flu is doing great. But here's the problem that we're starting to notice, and unfortunately, uh, this is a problem we just dealt with not too many weeks ago. I mean, I feel like we just ended the summer wave, like not even a month ago. Actually, it was more than that, but the law is already ending, and it's evident in Walgreens data. We can see here, Tennessee, when we click on just COVID only, 7.46%, Ohio, 4.13%, Missouri is starting to go up 295 uh, is your score there? And then Wisconsin, 0 0.22. I'm saying percentages. My mind is going back to when Walgreens did the positivity rates, but this is just the score on a scale of 1 to 10. So, yes, uh, sign of the times. Post-Halloween may have been what got the ball rolling for the next COVID wave. I was unsure if that was going to happen. I thought for sure it would be for flu and RSV. It may still be because we've been watching more detections of a flu show up in wastewater data in many places across the country but covid yeah it's already picking up quick and that's not a good thing because we're just a couple weeks away from thanksgiving here in the united states and of course as you know thanksgiving is one of the biggest super spreaders for these viruses of the year then of course christmas and the other holidays but thanksgiving it's a holiday here in the united states that doesn't really have a religion like Christmas. Okay, some people celebrate that. Some people celebrate Hanukkah and various other things. Thanksgiving, everybody gathers around for Thanksgiving, uh, and it, it's a big deal. So uh, I'm really concerned about what's to come. If we're already seeing COVID go up now, pre-Thanksgiving, you get a few people that maybe not have tested. You get them together, and then you get a good mixture at the airports, the bus stations, the train stations, the rest areas on the highways all that business, and we could be setting up for a super storm uh, post-Thanksgiving. Uh, and mind you, we don't have a new variant, and already things are starting to go up. Yeah, never a good thing. All right, over on the website, nothing really new to report. Hey, we hit a 1,000 posts now in the 2025 tracking threads, and heck, we still got the rest of this month in December to go. Yeah, it's been a very busy year for tracking illness just all around the world. Uh, yeah, never a good thing when we're getting a lot of illness to track. Uh, just not good whatsoever. Taking a look at what's going on in Canada, and we do see the viral activity level for COVID-19 is moderate. Flu A is moderate. RSV is also listed at moderate at this time. Taking a look at what's going on with the air qualities across the United States and portions of Canada. we got to let this refresh. So while we let this refresh. Let's pause and take a hydration break. Oh my, that looks bad. Water was the drink of choice today. Hey, if I ever forget the hydration break, please let me know down below. I have 
no problems with anyone yelling at me, saying, you forgot the hydration brake. It does happen sometimes, so please let me know. But, yeah, looking at this, uh, the West Coast, my goodness, we have reds, we have maroons, we have yellows, oranges. Uh, not a good thing for air qualities there. Not terrible in the East. Not sure why we're seeing some uh, bad ones pop up near the Great Lakes. It could be the moisture coming from lake effect snow, yes. It's that time of year, maybe that's messing up some of the meters i honestly don't know western canada also dealing with some bad air qualities today taking a look at what's going on with ems calls and it's been very busy for this look at pinellas county florida multiple sick person calls one two three four five six of them right now uh maryland take a look at this now you are seeing here some ones which ones is a good thing that means the emergency department's not full but you're also seeing threes you're also seeing multiple fours and you're also seeing reroute listed which means oh we don't want any more uh, patients right now uh, we, we just can't deal with that anymore look at all these fours wow again there's a lot of ones mixed in but uh, some fours some twos twos are not real bad but when you get to three or four that's a tremendous strain on the hospitals. And again, like I said, there are a lot of ones, but never good to see so many fours. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different hospitals dealing with fours. And what we're doing here is we're looking at the volume of patients in the emergency departments in Maryland. And anywhere with a four, that means it's flowing over capacity at that point. And there's a lot of hospitals doing just that there. All right, Monday in Philadelphia, we had 772 EMS incidents. I don't know what Philadelphia County is currently doing right now. I have not been listening to the EMS feed, but I can tell you this. The surrounding suburbs this morning and up until the lunchtime are very busy. I actually did one of my tweets that I have or posts that I have not done in a while. Look at this. I put, looks to be a very busy morning for EMS in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia suburbs. First two pictures are Montgomery County, and you're probably going, two pictures? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't fit them all onto one post. This was 11.55 a.m. I made this. Montgomery County at that time had 24 active EMS calls. Have not seen it get that high in a long time. Then we go over to Chester County, and while the number's not 24, it's the variety of calls. Sick person one, sick person two, sick person three. Respiratory difficulty, respiratory difficulty, and then more than one cardiac arrest call at that point. Well, let's do a live look and let's let's pray and hope things are better. Uh, Thirty-five or forty minutes later, Montgomery County uh, down to sixteen calls. And that's still high though, and we do see stroke is now listed in a bunch of other things. Let's hope Chester County's variety of calls are better. And oh my, nope, I'm seeing stroke listed once. I'm seeing respiratory difficulty listed one, two three, four times, uh, cardiac arrest, oh, West Nottingham Town, so that may be the same one from this morning with that screenshot I did, but yeah, not good for EMS right now, let's take a look at Bucks County, Pennsylvania, where they haven't been as busy, oh, never mind, they're now up to 11 calls of their own, which for this dashboard, that uh, is usually busy, respiratory distress, one, two, three times, yeah, I'm concerned, I haven't done my pneumonia search in a while, it's time I start adding that back into my mix. Uh, I feel some of this has got to be because of viruses. I mean, all these respiratory calls, sick person calls, yikes, not a good thing. Let's stick with Pennsylvania for a moment, and let's take a look at what is going on with Pennsylvania wastewater. And I do need to refresh this, and you'll see here, Pennsylvania wastewater for COVID is still listed very low at this time, but there's a few individual wastewater sites that you need to be aware of. And one is Washington County, where uh, things at this time, now this wastewater site doesn't update all that frequently, but it is now listed very high as of November 1st. You can see that value there over 9. Yeah, that would be a very high value. And let's zoom into portions of northwest Montgomery County near Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that's now listed at uh, very high as well for COVID and wastewater. Then we need to come to this. We're going to skip over the variant. It's XFG. It's still XFG, the dominating variant, all over the United States. Uh, not doing bad for influenza. Nothing yet. But RSV, take a look at this. We are now seeing our first detections of RSV in the state of Pennsylvania. Still listed in very low, but that probably will change to the low category in the next few weeks, just based on what's happening. And look where that problem area is. 
yet again northwest montgomery county up in the lansdale area where we do see a moderate marker now showing up for rsv so that's something we're gonna have to keep our eyes on uh, latest cases of influenza in Pennsylvania, 1,248 laboratory confirmed influenza cases have been reported through November 8th, 417 RSV, and COVID is still listed at low. Everything else, RSV and influenza, very low, so COVID now shifted to low from very low. That's actually a little bit of an increase, and I do want to show you this as well. You can clearly see here uh, that cases of uh, flu and RSV are starting to rise influenza flu a this week 290 cases versus 179 last week even flu b is going up 48 cases of that versus 38 last reporting they had 90 uh, cases of rsv in pennsylvania now up to 127 so my state of pennsylvania not doing so great at the moment a few hospitals in southeast pa with problems new jersey has a number of hospitals dealing with specialty issues today cooper university hospital uh inspire medical center mannington a psychiatric issue at robert wood johnson university hospital st peter's hospital also dealing with an issue that's four there were five issues earlier so it actually dropped by one taking a look at what is going on in new york i don't know if we have today's update yet but here's yesterday's, where there was 263 new cases of COVID reported, and we don't have any update to the, well, maybe not. Maybe it did update. Let's see, the EMS. No, the hospital missions is what I'm trying to say. That has not updated as of yet. All right, let's randomly take a look at some wastewater sites across the United States. I don't have any notes today. Nothing big and new and exciting has popped up, so we'll just randomly take a look at some places. We just spent a ton of time in the northeast mid-atlantic region let's go to the west coast shall we and let's see what's going on out there for covid i am seeing san jose is coming up and we looked at this yesterday i believe medium for covid not ever so slight increase at this time rsv that's still high and increasing hmpv low but increasing evd 68 is increasing norovirus is increasing yikes we got uh, many different problems going on at this wastewater site let's go up to sacramento shall we and in sacramento measles not much in the way of that nothing actually being detected for that covid is low influenza a low rsv is low norovirus is the only virus there that is medium at this time they did have a mpox detection back in september let's go even further north let's go up to boise idaho and i am seeing that the lander street boise idaho wastewater facility is detecting medium levels of COVID at this time. Influenza A, B, RSV, uh, HMPV, EVD 68, all fine, and norovirus is low in this area. All right, let's go to one more, actually, no, two more wastewater sites. We'll do somewhere in the Midwest, and then we will go to somewhere in the Southeast. Let's go to Clinton, Iowa. I don't know the last time that we clicked on this. Have we clicked on it? I don't know. Uh, COVID is low. Influenza A, RSV, Influenza B. Wow, this wastewater site is doing really well. You are seeing an ever so slight increase at this time for norovirus. Now ending somewhere in the south. Where do we want to go in the south? How about we go down to Alabama, shall we? And we'll go to the Birmingham, Alabama. How about Fultondale uh, wastewater site? This is Fultondale, Alabama. 77,000 population at this wastewater site. And so far, everything is good, except for two red flags I see here. One, HMPV, though low, is starting to rise. Two, norovirus overall, since end of September into October and up to now, has been seeing a rise. Wonky movement at the end. That could get corrected. So norovirus is listed at medium for you at this time. Alrighty, folks, that's all for the Tuesday edition of the Virus Update. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below. Of course, ways to support the channel are also listed down below. I will see everyone again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone, and have a fantastic Tuesday afternoon. Thanks for watching.